I used to think that confidence meant feeling my best and tapping into my highest self all the time. I thought confidence meant carrying this energy that I am the shit, that I am that girl. But later I learned that confidence is much more silence than that. I do think there is two types of confidence. There's that outer, more yang, more outward force of confidence. And then there is the inner, more yang, more silent force of confidence. And I felt like the one that I was truly craving was that silent confidence, that feeling of being confident inside. Even if no one in the room saw or noticed me, I would still feel good. Because the confidence I was wearing before, I needed that energy and validation from other people. If there wasn't anyone else in the room to notice me, I would not feel content with that. And that's when I knew something's off. If I wasn't feeling like my most bad bitch self, if I wasn't feeling 100%, then I wouldn't feel confident. I wouldn't feel capable. I would want to hide and not be seen until I can muster up that sense of bad bitchery again, for lack of a better word. What I learned is that confidence is simply the emotion that you feel when you believe in yourself and when you feel capable. Confidence is knowing you can get shit done and be that girl even on your worst days. That is the part I was lacking. That realization helped me gain that magic back. Helps me realize I now, at my worst, the worst right now, is still better than who I was seven years ago. And that's pretty dope to say. I remember watching this makeup show on Netflix. It had a challenge where all of the MUAs had to go on stage and do a live demo. One MUA was really shy, but they got up there and they owned it. They made the crowd laugh. They were addressing the fact that they're shy and that they've never done a live demo before. And they really let that crowd in. They let that crowd see them authentically. They showed up with their true face and that is also confidence. Whereas the person who was faking it till they made it, like I was previously doing, that became very obvious to the audience. There was something inauthentic about it. We could all feel that we weren't being let in, that that person wasn't being authentic and true. They were using a mask. They were putting up a wall. And that is the vibe that you give, I think, when you are not confident on the inside, but you're trying to present confidently on the outside. I really sat with this and taken some time to learn about it, learn about what causes people to not feel confident signs that you're not confident and how to become confident again so my intention with this video is to put all that information together so that way you can feel confident and capable even on your worst days and the tea is you need the most confidence when you're not feeling the best, when you're out of your comfort zone or when you are trying something new, that is when you have to muster up the most confidence. So I think these tips and tricks are really good for that. Not gonna lie, I had to edit that one. The tips and the tricks that was getting me, that was a tone twister for me. <laughs> One question that I had was, how do we know that we aren't confident? If I am out here faking it till I make it, you know, at what point am I like, okay, let me do the inner work. Let me do the shadow work. And sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking that we're confident, but deep down inside, we're insecure and we're ignoring that, repressing that, trying to cover that up, right? And find that perfect mask to wear. And the T is life is up and down. And sometimes you'll be really confident doing stuff and sometimes you won't be. And if you could spot the signs of when you're not, you can then take that time to tend to yourself, give yourself the TLC you need so that way you can go back out there and be a boss. So here are six signs that you may need to give yourself a little more love and tend to your self-esteem. Sign number one, you're making a lot of comparisons to yourself and everyone and everything else around you. You've developed this habit of looking outwardly for guidance, motivation, inspiration, advice. You're looking outside of yourself for validation. This could lead to feelings of inadequacy, feeling resentful of yourself, of your body, of the people around you. You could feel like the connection you have with yourself is severing. Sign number two, you're having a hard time asking for help. Feel ashamed or embarrassed of needing help. You don't want to look 
look powerless. You'd rather let yourself struggle instead of look weak to others. Sign number three, you're anxious about how you're going to be perceived. You worry you'll be rejected, discarded, or isolated if you present yourself authentically. You then develop a persona that is centered around pleasing others. And maybe we're lacking boundaries because we'd subconsciously rather disappoint ourselves and disappoint others and be rejected. And you're searching for that perfect mask to wear that gets all the approval and gets all the praise and you're hoping that would make you feel confident. Sign number four, you don't believe or accept any positive feedback. You reject it, you reject your opportunities and your blessings, or maybe you subconsciously self-sabotage right when you're about to reach the brink of success. And that's because you subconsciously believe that you aren't capable of carrying that out and seeing that journey the whole way through. So there's a lack of mindset here, but I can't do it. And I don't want to give myself a shot. I don't think it's going to work out. And you fall into this pattern where you don't succeed because you don't try. It's almost like being paralyzed due to perfectionism. Sign number five, you feel like you need to overcompensate. This is probably a subconscious thing more so than a conscious thing. Example, maybe you are over explaining yourself because nothing that you said felt like it was good enough and that it really translated, resonated with people. Sign number six is that you go into hiding when you don't feel perfect. You don't want to be seen, you don't want to be perceived, because you don't feel like you can control that, so you'd rather hide away. You'd rather just hermit and like disappear from the world because there's this subconscious belief that if we're not at 100% we don't deserve to be out there or we're gonna let people down. It's that root fear of being rejected or being discarded. Well, let's do some shadow work together. Let's understand why these patterns and these signs are coming up. Let's listen to those signs. So let's go back to making a bunch of comparisons to yourself and everything else around you. This happens when you don't trust your own inner voice. You don't see the own, your value within your own self. You start to look for it outwardly. There could have been this programming that how valuable you are depends on how well you show up for others. Example, how high of a grade you get on the test, what college you went to, your highest achievements determine how valuable you are. And that's all stuff you have to now undo. You have to become aware and conscious of it and sort of pull it out by the root so that way you can plant new seeds, put in a new programming, put in new positive thoughts and affirmations and start to operate from that instead. So what I would do is keep out a notebook or notes section on your phone and when you notice these thoughts come up these fears or these emotions or these anxieties or these blockages come up write them down and then write positive affirmations turn those hate statements into love statements example maybe you're like i am not pretty enough to be on camera you know turn that hate statement into a love statement just say i love aesthetics art beauty and i am a canvas for creating on that and start to have fun with it starts to operate on that higher vibration so you also have to start trusting your own voice and following your own intuition and that's going to take practice and i would microdose this start with little things like what do you want to eat right now you know if you're not confident you're probably going to be like oh i'll just have what everyone else is having or you're going to wait and see what the other person says and if they don't say anything then you're like i don't i don't know Instead, go inward and say, you know what, I want this, or no, I'm not hungry, or I'm craving this. Try to be decisive, try to make a decision, try to follow your own inner voice, your wants and your needs. As you do that, you can get louder and louder and louder with it until you find that balanced level. You have to practice feeling satisfied by following your own intuition and validating yourself instead of feeling satisfied when other people validate you. And I'm not saying like ignore what everyone else wants and needs and, and be self-centered. I don't think I have to coach you through being empathetic and being compassionate because you probably already do that naturally. What I'm saying is you have to learn how to be confident in your own choices, decisions, wants, and needs because that is going to help you build a sense of identity that you can really stand on. And then you will learn how to be kind and compassionate to others without compromising 
compromising that identity. When we're having trouble asking for help or when we fear looking powerless, I feel like there is this subconscious belief embedded deep in your brain that your needs are somehow a burden or your needs are like happening out of spite. There's almost like this inner belief of like, how dare I not live up to the standard and need help? How dare I have needs? I feel like this boils back to the inner child and the inner child feeling like their needs were a burden or maybe the parent or the guardian made you feel like your needs were coming out of spite or they were reacting to it as if your needs were some type of manipulation tactic. Now this creates that conversation in your brain and that your needs are coming from this place of spite and weakness and it's a burden and it's something that is bad and now we feel resentful of ourself and our spirit and our body whenever it tries to give us those clues it needs a little love and a little TLC and this could bleed into other areas of life it could bleed into a relationship where you get frustrated if the relationship has certain needs or if you have a pet or child or something that is dependent on you you feel frustrated when that has needs or if you have a job that has certain demands you can feel frustrated at that and because it triggers in you this feeling of not being good enough this feeling of fear of being powerless it triggers in you this fear of being anything less than perfect so to heal that you have to tell yourself that it's okay to show up at 80 percent it's okay to show up at 85 percent like it's fine that is still acceptable and the first step to healing this is one becoming aware of it so that way you can take your power back from it and it's not just like in the shadows controlling you i think you have to learn how to see strength in weakness how to see strength in vulnerability watch people who do that watch ted talk people usually really good at showing and using their vulnerability as a strength healers astrologers all really good at being alchemists and transmuting their vulnerabilities into strength so i think you have to change your perception here on vulnerability and see it not as a weakness not as a burden but as an opportunity to grow become stronger and connect with others that is another thing about vulnerability that is what creates true intimacy is when you're able to be real and raw with people you need to allow yourself to do that and that means opening your heart up and allowing people to be there for you and also being there for other people and learning how to love learn how to be in a community i think this is good to do in microdoses just small steps at a time start by opening up to brother sister cousin best friend whoever you feel like could be a, a good confidant and see if they will listen or see if you can ask them for help if you find yourself in a situation where you look around you and, and you don't feel like anybody will pull through for you which i find can happen to people who lack confidence and who lack boundaries they can get swept up by energy vampires and people can definitely use their kindness use their energy i know what that feels like and i've had a lot of clients who have gone through something similar and one thing i could say about that is if the second you wake up to that these people will start to drop you will not be able to unsee it and it's not easy you have to grieve and you have to let them go and you might have to release some people and it might be disappointing and you realize who's there and who's not but let the change happen because i promise you when you let those people go more loving and caring and genuine people can drop into your life and you can actually put your energy there also another tip i have for this is to be mindful of how you judge yourself because odds are somebody judged you harshly and now you judge yourself super harshly and now you judge the world super harshly it gets really easy to project this onto somebody else this energy can bleed into other areas of life so just pay attention to judgment and the conversation you have with yourself when you're judging yourself is it kind or is it me odds are it's a little me and one thing about your brain is that if you don't like the thoughts going on you could always change them think of your brain like a little phone with the music app on if you don't like the song you can boop 
change the song. You can control your brain in the exact same way. Another tip I have to feel more confident and to really build up that relationship you have with yourself is to own your shit. You have to let go of the mask, the mask that you put on to make other people happy. You gotta let that go. You have to constantly remind yourself that it is okay if other people don't like you. You have to be okay with repelling people. You gotta remember it's not always about what you're doing. Maybe it's just about how they feel. You could be shining and doing everything right and it, someone else could still feel some type of way about it someone else could still some evil eye about it so i'm telling you don't always listen to that it's not always about you and what you're doing that is them their own shadow work and their own projections coming out this is something you definitely face as you start to own yourself and be authentic and gain more confidence as the people around you might drop like flies the snakes in the garden will be shown my love don't be afraid of that like let that happen let that go and the way to do that is just to believe that there really is something better on the way because there is and the right people will be drawn to you and they will fit and vibe with you in a more harmonious way and they won't drain you of your energy because they're there for you and who you authentically are because you're allowing that to be seen and this process takes time like it takes time to find out who you authentically are it takes time to draw people in it takes time to attract your new soul tribe your new karmic community and karmic relationships but but you do got time and you will be surprised how quickly things happen when you're in alignment with yourself things take a lot longer to happen when you're out of alignment with yourself but when you are in alignment the ball gets rolling i would recommend playing experimenting doing trial and error to find yourself give yourself the freedom be like a little kid experimenting with what they want to wear and how they want to do their hair and how they want to talk how they want to speak how they want to show up in the world you can have that same excitement um now doesn't matter what your age is my next tip is that you have to accept the abundance and positivity that comes your way it will definitely start coming when you're confident i'm telling you confidence is key to unlocking a lot of doors and you can do this by removing that mental cap of what you think you deserve there's a subconscious you know limit the subconscious bar that you've placed on yourself where you're like i deserve this i can only handle this everything outside of that everything above that i can't handle it i'm not capable you need to remove that be mindful when you're talking to yourself like that and take that cap off say what am i doing what am i thinking why am i putting a limit on myself i deserve more and i should just go try it i should just go get it i think a great way to practice doing this is to do something really kind and loving for yourself regularly Give yourself little treats big or small whatever you can manage for me when i was serving at the restaurant my treat was getting my nails done i wanted my nails to be cute you know you don't want to be serving people's food with musty nails so that was like my little treat now my treat is getting my hair done i need to get it done soon but i love getting my hair done i love upkeeping really long pretty hair so that's like my little treat now but it could be something so simple like five dollar coffee and when i literally had no money to spend i would do baths I would have a little me bath where I played my music. I used to throw little teas in there when I learned about herbal baths. And that was like my little treat myself day. Take that up a notch. Don't be afraid to be like, I deserve a little more. Especially if you can manage it and it's not going to hurt you. And it's not going to um, break your bank. Go ahead and give yourself a little more. So if you are overcompensating because you don't feel confident, remember this quote. A lion does need to roar for everyone to know it's a lion. Love that quote, stuck with me. Funny because I have Mercury in Leo and Venus in Leo. But I love this quote because it reminds me that you don't have to compensate. Less is more sometimes and you don't have anything to prove to anyone. As long as you know about you, then that's it. No one else can tell you about you. Another tip I have for this would be to celebrate your wins big or small do not be afraid to celebrate yourself that is how you have powerful energy celebrities are not afraid to be like i won the grammys this year woohoo and we all celebrate them like have your moment don't be afraid to roar when it is time to be a lion baby my last tip and this is probably my biggest one and this is for the girlies who go into hiding whenever they don't feel good enough and that tip is to show up imperfectly even if you're a little anxious even if you're feeling a little ugly even 
even if you're not feeling your best show up anyway you still have something you offer you are still valued you still matter even if you want to try something new but you're a little scared do it scared the reason why you're feeling inadequate is probably because you have no history of succeeding at this but the only way to get that history is to go through the experience and try it out so you can't be afraid of failure you can't be afraid of looking bad and being human you gotta go out there you gotta show up as is i remember this quote that my auntie's friend said and they said don't be afraid to be an ugly drag queen I'm not sure who the original quote is from but that one stuck with me don't be afraid to go out there and be a beginner you all start there and then as you practice and you go through it you gain the experience you get better at it you master your craft and bada bing bada boom now you're confident in it i hope that this video helped you sort of pinpoint your patterns and also gave you strategies for reprogramming those patterns i know today we talked a lot about manifesting confidence within let me know if you would like a part two where we talk about manifesting confidence outside in that more yang fashion that we were talking about in that more outward way but in a way that isn't overcompensating or is you being cocky i would love to dive into that topic for you and i am here to serve i'm here to help you heal so let me know if that's something you want me to do i would also love to hear your comments and your tips about building confidence and maybe the roots of not feeling confidence and what your experiences are with that there are so many beautiful brains out here on this internet and this comment section i hope is a place where we can learn from all those wonderful brains anyways thank you so much for tuning in i am so excited to be back on youtube you have no idea i'm getting visions and downloads and i think this is really good and that this is the next step for me i used to love being on youtube but then i lost my confidence like i said that happens in life sometimes but i feel like i lost it for a really long time because i didn't have these strategies and these like tips in mind which is why i really wanted to create this video for you so that way you don't have to feel so disconnected from yourself and your confidence and your you know sense of self-worth for so long but in that journey of following my way out of it i learned a lot and i'm just really honored to be sharing that with you today i feel really grateful to be in this space for you to sit down make a little video and edit it and upload it and yeah i don't know feel grateful to be here and i got that confidence back okay and these are the tips i use to get this confidence back and girl i'm feeling good <laughs> for those of you who don't know me my name is tania bright i'm an astrologer i'm a tarot reader i'm a mystic I'm a healer i'm a writer and i'm a mentor i'm a manifesting generator too so you can see why there's always a lot going on my mentorship program is opening back up this april if you'd like to find out more about that please check out the links down below or if you want to check out my other social medias my official social medias will be linked down below and those are my only social medias okay anyways thank you so much for listening i'll see you in the next video Bye. I'm really okay, okay, hang on. Let me serve, girl. Let me serve. Is that a serve? I think that's a serve. The hair is, is, is doing its thing today. Those overnight rollers, my man. My girl. My person. Whoever's on the other screen. Okay, fuck it. We got it.